Now, since Congressman Keith Ellison's epic meltdown right here on Hannity two nights ago, we decided to take a closer look at the man who called me immoral and a liar. Now, it didn't take long to prove his hypocrisy, as his past reveals a host of radical connections, primarily to Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Now, Ellison has publicly admitted to what he calls an 18-month involvement with the group and its 1995 Million Man March. Now, according to the St. Paul Pioneer Press, Ellison's link to Farrakhan, well, goes back much further. It dates back to his time as a law student at the University of Minnesota in the late 80s and early 90s. Now, my math not, may not be great, but early 90s to 1995 is not exactly 18 months. Khan aide Khalid Abdul Muhammad, who famously, among other things, called Jews bloodsuckers of the black nation. And Ellison also wrote two articles as a law student in support of Louis Farrakhan. Now, in the first one, he defended the minister against accusations of racism, writing, quote, racism means conspiracy to subjugate and actual subjugation, and that means planned social, economic, and political subjugation of whites. It cannot be intelligently argued that the nation of Islam is doing this. And a fellow classmate told Minnesota Public Radio that my recollections of Keith are of that person who was very much in support of the nation of Islam and their messages that they tried to convey to the larger community. Now, in 2006, when his past caught up with him, Ellison denounced the nation of Islam. But the reality is this congressman not only associated with these radicals, but he spent years spewing their hateful rhetoric. And not surprisingly, when we reached out to Congressman Ellison, he finally responded late tonight with another attack on yours truly and failed to respond to the question at hand. His statement read, quote, Tomorrow, a set of devastating cuts will hit every American, costing 750,000 jobs over the course of the year if Congress does not act. The seriousness of these cuts was the subject and context of my spirited exchange with Sean Hannity on Tuesday night. Americans deserve journalists who provide responsible, objective reporting. Instead, Sean Hannity is bringing up my religion and making personal attacks. This is sad. Can we get back to what's best for the American people now? Now, just like the other night, Congressman Ellison, he refused to answer our question. I wasn't questioning his religion. I was asking about his past association with Louis Farrakhan, Khalid Muhammad, and the Nation of Islam. Here with reaction from the New York Civil Rights Coalition, Michael Myers, and Fox News contributor, Deneen Borelli. I didn't ask about his religion. He didn't, not one bit. Didn't ask one question about it. We heard it. Listen, he's a left-wing radical. He had no intentions on debating you on the issues of the day that people are concerned about, which was the sequestration, the debt, and our deficit. But of course, he's going to attack you because that's what the left does. This is like the Chicago-style machine that wants to silence anyone that they oppose. They don't want to hear the other side of the argument. Well, you know, but, but, but this is deep because we, we all agree Farrakhan is is a racist and an anti-Semite. Anyone disagree? No. You agree? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Now, here he's hanging out with also with Khalid Muhammad. Now, not only did he call Jews bloodsuckers of the black nation, he also said, kill everything white that's in sight, kill the women, kill the children, kill the old people, kill the babies. He used a slur for gay people. Kill them all. Sean, what we have to realize is that this nation and the so-called black nation um, for, for some time now have been enduring insufferable, wacky, unhinged leadership. And the, the likes of Keith Ellison, Louis Farrakhan, Reverend Jeremiah Wright, it goes on and on and on. Now, the point here is that the nation has become racialized and radicalized in terms of the leadership tier. And Keith Ellison, I watched the interview with, that you tried to have with him. He wasn't, he wasn't concerned about answering any of your questions. Oh, no. He came on this, this station to do two things. One, to defend the black messiah, who Jamie Foxx calls our Lord and Savior. Barack Obama, and to make and to make brownie points with the so what Denine calls the left, what they call themselves progressives, meaning that they have declared war on the Republican Party, and they've declared war on Fox News Channel, which they see as right. an auxiliary but of the Republican is, Party. This is this is really serious, in as much as Farrakhan 
one of the most divisive figures in our culture, rabid anti-Semite racist. Khalid Muhammad killed the women, everything white that's in sight, killed the women, Wait killed the babies, don't, Hang on. Wait, killed the don't, children. Don't forget, don't killed forget the, people, the Congressional Muslim. Black yeah. Caucus, the entire Congressional Black Caucus, led then by Kwaeezi and Fume, they entered a sacred covenant with Minister Louis Farrakhan. All right, so the point is, as what, did the what, NATP. What, well, it, it reminds me a little bit. How has he gone this far without the scrutiny that we are now rightly giving? How has giving? he gotten this far? That, how has he gotten this that's far? That's very concerning. And even though he wrote this letter. Obama or Keith? I'm talking ago, about Keith. <laughs> I mean, it still doesn't erase what we know about this guy. You know what? I, I think it's very telling how we are able to put people in these positions where, in fact, it's very, uh, it's not good for our country. And considering the fact how he came out against you the other day, I mean, that, that just tells me where he really stands. And again, he did not want to debate you whatsoever. No. Uh, and listen, I gave him an opportunity to rant. No, you did. I wanted to ask times. him a question about the morality of the debt and the deficit. Right. Um, what is the difference? I mean, it, it, do we have somebody then in Congress that is the equivalent of, on one side of what the Klan is? Because I view the rabid rantings of Khalid Muhammad mm -hmm. as frightening in terms of racism anti-Semitism. It's not just that hook nose, yeah. bagel eating, so-called Jews. These are all comments that have come yeah, out but, of him. But Farrakhan's newspaper mm -hmm. once said that the God that teaches me, his newspaper had teaches me that the white man is the skunk of the planet Earth. Yeah. Well, look, Khalid Abdul Muhammad is dead. He's dead. And he's dead. I, I debated him once Louis, for three hours. Louis Farrakhan still lives. And we have to understand that Louis Farrakhan has been for a long time the apostle of black racism and anti-Semitism. He's been embraced by, endorsed by, hugged by, given awards by, and the, by the black leadership, the tier, the black leadership tier. And they see him as the only black man in America, before Barack Obama, the only black man in America who could bring a million men, black men, to Washington, D.C. Now, I was the only one, I wasn't a national leader, but I was the only black so-called intellectual leader who opposed Louis Farrakhan's Million Man March because I thought it was racist, I thought it was sexist and regressive. Not one black leader, not Jesse Jackson, not Al Sharpton, who also called Jews, by the way, diamond merchants, um, not one black leader has opposed has opposed Louis Farrakhan. Well, you know, considering yeah. the importance of, especially the black community, having positive role models and positive leadership, we are not really seeing that today, especially on a national level. You look at the high unemployment, unemployment of, of the teens, black teens are 40, 50 percent. Yep. You know, what are our politicians doing trying to fix the situation? They're not. They're politicians because they're in it for themselves. They're not doing anything for the black community. But it's also, Jobs, beca it's also because the black community it's also because the black community has been radicalized and racialized, and they send the same people back to office simply because All of the their time. skin and color. And they're not doing anything. And they're not doing anything to about unemployment, unemployment, education, anything. And even to take it to a sadder level, you two will be attacked for calling out people that are racist I find and bigoted. That, I find these people insufferable. But I'll take the attack. All right. <laughs> Thank you both for being with us.